is the reasoning behind level one crossplay? <gasps> oh, God. Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys kind of like the, I guess it's been about a week, so pretty much a week's progression uh, since the last video. Uh, let me go ahead and get started real fast. Okay. So before I get started, jump into a map. I just kind of want to speed you guys up to date with what we've been doing. So our Atlas is done. 115 out of 115. Uh, we have all of our Void Stones or Watch Stones except for one. I can very, very easily get it. I was just running things in sets. Um, an example is like, I've already cleared Feared. Feared was very easy. I'm not going to have a video for you guys. I apologize. Most of this stuff is done live on stream. Uh, but I have pretty much been farming invitations to try to get Awakened Gems. Um, pretty unlucky, so right now I have like, if you look at the top left and the bottom right, you'll see I have like a uh, Formed ready and the Elder Slayers ready. I could even have a Feared ready. Uh, I have everything for another Feared. But I ran out of invitations, sadly. So because I ran out of invitations, I think the only way for me to get these invitations is just kind of rip some of my Guardian maps and run them anyway. For example, I have like 12 Baron, but only 3 Alhesman. Alhesman's very important, not important for this build, but it actually has a reason because the Hunter Exalt can be very beneficial. An example would be if I Hunter Exalt my Amulet, there's a very good chance for um, for me pulling out an affix that I want, such as Malevolence Mana Reservation or Reduced Attribute Requirements globally for all your gems, so it's kind of like a mini Adzeri's Foible. I believe there's also a chance at fire multi. So there's just a lot of uh, very beneficial things there. And then even on weapon, there's a chance for a malevolence effect. So all Hesman's pretty big, but I don't know how to turn these Baron maps into all Hesman. So basically gonna just be running um, these to try to get these invitations. Uh, furthermore, I have redone my Atlas yet again, since we are in pretty much full bossing setup. Uh, this is pretty much what it looks like. We're bossing with Height of Hubris and Captivated Interest. I think the only one I didn't do Captivated Interest on was the Feared. Uh, as you saw from the Aegis clip, I was getting a little burnt out, but finding that Aegis Aurora really kind of inspired me to want to keep pushing. So with that being said, we have modified the skill tree a little bit. So for the Aegis version, of course, we come up here and we take Arcane Guarding, and then we come down here and we grab basically Glancing Blows with Sanctuary. Then after that, you want to drop your Purity of Elements, and you want to slap on Tempest Shield. Uh, the reason being is to acquire basically Shock Immune and a Block Cap. Uh, from there, you can actually squeeze in Skitterbots if you run a... Well, I guess I showed this in the previous one, but Mortifying Aspect um, <clears throat> can allow you to get Skitterbot, but you do need to get Mono Reservation on your small. But that's for another point. We're not, we're not going to talk about too much about that. From here, uh, I wanted to go ahead and open up this tab right over here. So these are my collection of very good base Elder Helms. So I have a 84 Eternal Elder. I have an 85 Samnite Elder, uh, an 85 Royal, and a, another 85 Royal. If you guys saw in one of the last videos, I think it was a few videos ago actually, I had a helmet that looked identical to this, which was this helmet right here. So this helmet, this is where we did the two exalt craft for suffixes cannot be changed. Harvest, reforged life more likely. And we hit a tier six life regen roll, which is really bad. This helmet, I'm probably going to do the exact same thing because for me to replace my current helmet, which is this, I want to make sure I have a good regeneration roll on my suffix. It's just because I'm in SSF. It's a preference, right? Um, and then that way I can work on my prefixes, but for now we're trying to fix the suffixes. Other than that, I have this little tab over here, so I just kind of want to hover over some stuff that we've gained. So I have uh, two skin of the loyal, I also have a blessing of Chalupa, natural 82 six link dropped, I think it was from uh, Sentinel. I've got multiple Groot calls. I ran 15 eaters, the only thing I have to show is a random forbidden flesh, no melding dropped. Uh, Bricked Paradoxica, some Old Awakened Gems, two Glorious Vanity, two Lethal Pride, two Elegant Hubris, and a Militant Faith, four Watcher's Eyes, none usable for my build, a random synthesized uh, damage per Int Onyx Amulet, 
Uh, and that's pretty much about it. However, we did manage to get a Brutal Restraint, which is located right here. I actually found two Brutal Restraints. I sunk about 30 Divines in, and I'm very happy with this one, because this one has Onslaught, along with Alchemist Genius, and even has a Dex roll. So now we're at like 147 Dex, which is pretty sick. That gives me a bit of flexibility. This ring right here is a ring that I have crafted recently. Um, not an amazing ring, it basically just has Suffix of Fire with Ellie from the Opal Implicit. It's got Resistance open for me to craft, uh, along with a Life Roll. One thing unique about this is, you'll notice my ring gives me Fire Damage. It's not a big deal, but that Fire Damage is global because it's not two attacks. What that means is, I don't need to have Fire Damage to spells on my Abyssal Jewel. I do anyway, but it doesn't really matter. And that allows me to essentially deal Fire Damage with Frostblink which allows me to apply Combustion, which is minus Fire Res. All right, that being said, enough talk. Let's go run a Tier 15 Temple Map. So, sadly, can't witness it because uh, it's already witnessed. Um, it's great multi. I might get one shot, but let's see. Okay. So one of the biggest goals for us right now is trying to find a melding of the flesh and hitting level 100. However, the level 100 is probably going to get delayed as I am 99 right now at like 7%, but I have like 7 mavens stocked up and that 7 is going to go up way higher when I run like my actual invitations as well. Um, and the reason I want to do that is just kind of like for the feeling of getting awakened gems, it adds for really nice progression on an SSF character, especially this character, since like Awakened Burns are literally plus one, right? Uh, Awakened Ellie Focus is also plus one. Uh, Awakened Ink AoE is just good. Um, yeah, I think I also may even try Uber Awakener on this character because Uber Awakener does give a chance at support gems. And I don't know if I need an Awakener orb. I guess technically it wouldn't be too bad to have like a Shaper Elder influenced helm, but I haven't really thought much about crafting like a Giga 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 helm yet. Hey, another Divine. Let me get that. Damage has been pretty respectable on the character. I, I like it quite a bit. I'm always impressed with my SSF character's progression compared to my trade league. Hey, I don't really need that, but uh, I'm not going to complain. Okay, right, we're just going to shoot out of here. And I mean, that's that's pretty much the character progress so far. I want to recraft new gloves so I can have an extra suffix, because that life gain on hit doesn't do anything. But that's something that's a work in progress. I would like to craft a new belt. Um... Previously, I was unable to kind of craft a new belt because I was lacking catalysts, so fertile catalysts are kind of a pain in the ass to get. It turns out that there's this thing in the current league called uh, Sentinel, and Sentinel is very balanced for getting uh, catalysts. So this is currently my Sentinel. It basically just... Actually, this one doesn't even have it anymore, but I had like a T2 um, Metamorph reward gain, and I probably used like 60 Sentinel charges just over and over and over. And it was just shitting out catalysts, which is awesome for SSF because these are essentially what I'm going to... Here, I'll just do it right now. So like in this tab here, I have like uh, an 86 Stygian and an 86 Stygian. So I'm going to just do this and this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now life rolls on these are increased by 20%. So that would be like life roll, life regeneration, life recovery... Um, that's pretty much it. Yep. Anyway, that's, that's quite literally pretty much about it. So hope you guys have, uh, had a wonderful time. Hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. Um, really excited to see what's happening next league. Uh, before I finish though, there is one thing I would like to bring attention to, uh, moving in towards next league. Um, we will have another place to find the build and that is going to be POE Vault. I've officially partnered with PoE Vault, so basically PoE Vault has a written guide for my Righteous Fire Inquisitor, 
It quite literally has all of my information from my YouTube, from the POBs, just posted quite literally on here. Um, I know a lot of people always ask for like step-by-step -step guides, what gems do I take from leveling, etc. A lot of that is all answered right here. Um, so don't forget, moving in, in towards the next league, you're going to have a YouTube video guide, you're going to have my website FAQ, and then you're going to have essentially POE Vault for more just written concrete guides that you wanted, right? Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. As always, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, except for Mondays at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all tomorrow.